as we see year wise how many marks we are getting from c programming and data structures in 2015 in set 1 we got from 7 marks and in set 2 we got for 11 marks and in set 3 18 marks and in 2015 we got approximately for 12 marks and in 2017 14 and 11 marks in 2018 9 marks and 19 14 marks so approximately about 10 marks for now uh, for the about 10 marks we will get the programming and data structures marks to be gate so that these are the contents we are going to discuss today introduction functions and variables operators and expressions structure of ac program control structures arrays and strings functions storage classes structures and unions pointer in c and dynamic memory allocation file management in c and about the command line arguments so mostly we'll concentrate on structures and unions and pointers uh, then we'll move on to the, after completion of this programming we'll move on to the data structures class so as you know that one c was developed by the dennis it say 1972 so it's a highly portable language so the historical developments of the c language is in 1916 first we invented the algol language then in 1963 cpl language will be came into the existence in 1969 that will be modified little bit bcpl then in 1970 year that will be converted to b language then with small modifications and extra added features it will become after b we can see so it will become c in 1972 uh, the c language was invented by the dennis rickke so common to the c programming language so here we have so many basically c tokens so token is nothing but a small unit which have which is a meaningful unit it is called as the token so to form a program what are the different tokens are presented to write a c program so what are the different atomic units we will use and how how we will form a c program so in generally uh, to write or to speak any language we will start we will start with the alphabet we will learn the alphabet then we will learn the words then we will go for the grammar and we will form the sentences like a we will learn a language in the same manner to write uh, c programming and to learn c programming we need to know some of what are the alphabet and what are the words presented and what are the how to form the sentences this in this order we will see this is called as the tokens so atomic units by using this one we can frame the programming so what are the different types of token present to tokens presented in c programming are keyword identifier constant string special symbol and operators as you know that when i am telling what are the different alphabets presented in english language you will tell that a b c d e f g h up to z like that in the uh, that is for english language if i ask you for telugu language you will tell that what are the alphabets presented in telugu language a to aha you will tell so in the same manner for writing of this c programming also we need to know these different types of tokens like keywords identifier constant string special symbols and operators we will see one by one the keywords keywords are predefined tokens in c language these are also called as the reserved words which means which have keywords or reserved words will have some special meaning to the compiler so it will do that work only if it is a or uh, some keyword uh, int so that is represents it is a integer data type variable so it's like it has some keyword it is a keyword it has some special meaning so it will do that work only so this keyword this keyword can be used only for the intended action whatever the action we had given to that particular word that work only it will do so this is called as intended action so particular action it will do so they cannot be used for the another purpose we should not use that one to the another work 
so and we had 32 keywords in the key language we had 32 keywords so that is the first token keywords keywords are nothing but the reserved words so these keywords has the special meaning and it has some intended action it will perform the action only we should not use this one to do some other action so such type of keywords we had 32 in the key language if else if in main void um, auto action like this different types of keywords we had so that is first token so that is one meaningful unit and the second one is the data type so as we know that if it is a 25 we will tell that 25 is a number it is a type number and then if we had given 25.57 like this if we had given we know that of the real value like that we will tell but how the machine will understand whether it is an integer value or whether it is a uh, float value or real value so which will identify me first we have to tell them so we had some constant constant is another token so in constant we will tell that so if the integer constant if values uh, lies between 0 to 9 we will tell it is a integer constant and if the values has some thing of some decimal point and it has some values like 0 to 9 between and it consists of one decimal point we call it as a float constant <coughs> and then if the value is presented within the single quotation we will call it as a character constant if the value is presented in the double quotes we will treat it as a string constant so like this we will like this we will tell the system to be constant now if we will treat like that so that is called as the constant how we will learn initially how to hide the alphabet like that in the same manner here we will give the system to be constant values if it is that one it is a integer constant if the float constant like that we will give the information and then after that so it uh, another atomic unit called as the data type a data type defines a set of values and the operations that can be performed on them so if you want to perform some addition operation we can't perform addition operation with, between two characters between two strings so we need to have either integer values or close values so how we can tell that it is a integer it, it can be variable can close only integer values this variable can close only uh, character values this variable can close only so on so values that can be given by the data type set of values and the operations that can be performed on them a data type defines set of values what type of values you are going to store in that one and what are the operations you can perform on that one will be given by the data type so every data type in a C program has a data type associated with it so in, in C we have different data types like integer flows, characters, strings, so like that. And also we had one special data type called the void data type. So which indicates that no data type. So which it describes the it does it describes does not describe the data items. So nothing is so different. It does not describe the any data item. No data type it is void. So while you are writing your program first, after uh, hash include hdevelop.h header file, you will write that void name. So that void represents no data type. So the next one is the next token is character set. So the C character set includes the upper case letters, capital A to Z and the lower case letters small a to z and the decimal digits 0 to 9 and certain special characters can also be included in the character set special characters and all and 
identifier one more token these are all the atomic units by using these atomic units we will build the program so that's why first we will see the c token then we move on to the structure of a c program then we will see simple program and output so now identifier is nothing but to identify something we will use the identifier the name itself is suggesting that to identify something identifiers so it's nothing but identifiers are distinct name given to the program elements such as constants variables etc to identify something so whether it is a function name or whether it is a file name or whether it is a uh, constant or variable to identify that one we will give some names to that one distinct names those are called as the identifiers so an identifier is a sequence of letters digits and the special character underscore is allowed so uh, for the variable uh, for the identifier we had some rules so what are the rules mean it must start with a letter or underscore and it should not start with the any special symbols or numbers and no comma special symbols like no commas or blanks are allowed with the variable name or identifier name and it's a case sensitive if what is a capital uh, capital name is different from the lower case letters so that is case sensitive and the different types of data types and the number of bytes occupied by the different data types character data type occupies 1 byte into the data type occupies 3 bytes and float four bytes double eight bytes void will occupy zero bytes no data type it is signed character it will occupy one byte and unsigned character will also occupy one byte short signed int will occupy two bytes and short unsigned int will occupy the three bytes and long int will occupy the four bytes so likewise uh, the data type and how many bytes of information uh, bytes it will take so that is So already I explained about the constant. So constant is a literal, which means constant. If you have ten value, it is ten anywhere. So its value will not change. It is remain unchanged during the execution of any program. If you consider ten before five lines, it is ten only. After five lines of the program also, ten value is ten only. so constant is a literal which remains unchanged during the execution of a program whereas some coming to the variables the name itself suggesting that variables is nothing but varying its values from time to time in the execution if you had given a value as 1 so uh, at the particular point of time a value is 1 after four five lines that might be changing with this some instruction a is equal to a plus 10 or a is equal to b minus 5 so like that a value is not changed to the some other value so variable the value will vary from time to time is called as the variables and a constant is a fixed value that cannot be altered during the execution of a program and the two constants are divided into two categories the primary constants and secondary constants and one more token is escape sequences some non printing characters and some other characters such as double quotes single quotes question mark and backslash is required an escape sequence so if you want print some double quotes single quotes question mark backslash like this so we'll use the escape sequence so escape sequence slash here means it will use like some bell meaning and if you given slash b in your statement it will go one step back back space slash c will give cap space so slash n will go the cursor will go to the new line slash v vertical tab so it will come to the vertical and one more form field slash r carry written it will come to the starting point and to print the double quotes the we had slash double quotes and to print the single quote question mark slash so we'll have slash Question mark slash slash, and to print the null value, we have slash followed by zero. 
so this is escape sequence already i had given some introduction to this variable variable can variable can be considered as a name given to the location in the memory so while you are storing your value in the memory location for them to identify it this one we are giving a name so that is variable a name given to a location in memory and the term variable is used to denote any value that is referred to a name instead of explicit value and a variable is able to hold different values during the execution of the program whereas the constant uh, constant is restricted to the just one value so whereas in the variable see here in this example 2 3 10 are the constant if you consider 2 3 10 anywhere that value will remain same 2 3 10 throughout your program execution but whereas if you consider x and y these values will change depending upon the execution of the program and well this total equation is known as an expression so this total equation is known as the expression it will consisting of some operands and some operators so here 2x and 3y and 10 are the operands and less than equal to are the operators if it is consisting of some operands and operators it is treated as the expression and what are the rules for constructing a variable of a name so same the rules whatever we are following for the identifier the same rules we can follow for the constructing of the variable name also so the name of a variable is composed of one to several characters the first which must be a letter it should not be a uh, number or special character so no special characters other than the letters digits and underscore can be used in a variable name we can use only underscore so we should not use any other special symbols other than the underscore and we should not start with your variable name with the numbers are special characters except the underscore these are the rules for framing of your variable name so when you are writing a variable name you have to follow all these rules and what are the different types of instruction statements presented in the c language type declaration instructions input output instructions systematic instructions and control instructions are presented so type declaration instructions are used to declare the type of the variable for which ever we are going to be used in our program so before using pop any value or any variable in the program of uh, initially we have to declare them so we have to declare the type of the variable what we are going to use in our program after open curly brace of your c program so that type of instruction will comes under the type declaration instruction and then the next one is input output instruction so to perform the function to perform to perform some of the functions of supplying input data to a program and obtaining the results from output results from it so by using can of statement will give input to the program and by using the print of statement we will get the output from the program so these statements are called as the input output statements these instructions are comes under the input output instructions then automatic instructions to perform the automatic operation between the constants and variables we will use the automatic instructions and the control instructions to change the sequence of the control to control the sequence of execution of various statements in a program we will use the control statements and then what is an operator and an expression operator is a symbol that tells the computer to perform certain mathematical or logical manipulations so operator it will it is a symbol which tells the computer to perform certain mathematical or logical manipulations if it is a plus all you know that if plus symbol is present there we will tell that it will perform the addition operation so on this so it will perform the mathematical operations so like as any operator is a symbol that tells the computer to perform certain mathematical or logical manipulations 
and the next one is the operators so the operators used in a program to manipulate data data and the variables even to manipulate with the data and variables we we'll use the operators so in some operators required two operands so to perform some operation will require two operands for example if you want to perform some addition operation so then a plus operator will take two values which means it will take the two operands and whereas some operators will depends upon only single operand for example if you are incrementing or performing the decrementation so we can we can have only one operand a plus plus one plus plus b plus plus like that and the operators are classified into two types unary operators and binary operators and ternary operator depending on whether they operate on one two or three operands respectively so unary operator so which consist of one operator and one operand operand binary operators require two operands ternary operator require three operating sorry three operands so the ternary operator and question mark colon operator we can tell and the next types of operators now we had seen about what is the operator and what is the operands so in that operators we had different types of operators not only plus operator it is known very well so that's why we are giving example of plus so likewise what are the different types of operators presented in the c language so the different types of operators presented in c language we have four classes of operators arithmetic operators relational operators logical operators bitwise operators and in addition to these some other special operators are also presented in the c that those are increment and decrement operators conditional operator and then assignment operators so different arithmetic operators presented are plus to minus to star slash and percentage plus is for addition minus is for subtraction and star is for multiplication slash is for division and percentage is for modulo division and relational operators we have greater than greater than or equal to less than less than or equal to double equal to and not equal to the relational operators are symbols that are used to test the relationship between two variables if the first one is greater than to the second one or second one is less than the first one so to compare the relationship between those two variables are between two constants we will use the relational operators we often compare two quantities and depending on their relation takes a time decision whether it is less than true okay it will return some one whether it is not less than so it is false it will return some value so like this it will perform the operations and then the next operator is logical operators so the logical operators are symbols that are used to combine or negate the expression containing the relational operators sorry containing the relational operators so now see this double and present will represent the logical and so if both the statements are true then it will return to the sorry no logical operator uh, it will Uh, two ampersand symbols will represent the logical and two five symbols represent the logical or and not it will neg if and logical and combines the both the statements and logical or will takes any one of the true value and not will negates and the bitwise operators to perform the operations on bits we we'll use the bitwise operators the lowest logical element in the memory is a bit c allows the programmer to interact directly with the hardware of a particular system through bitwise operators and expressions so this operators works only with integer and character data types and it cannot be used with the floating or real values so these operators bitwise operators we have to use with the integer and character data types only with the floating points and double data types we should not use the bitwise operators 
so once complement bitwise or bitwise and bitwise exclusive or right shift and left shift we had different bitwise operators and the next operators we had in c language are increment and decrement operators so c has two very useful operators for adding and subtracting a variable these are the uh, increment and decrement operators plus plus and minus minus plus plus will represent here plus plus will represent the increment and minus minus will represents the decrement so these two operators are unary operators because we will give only one operand to perform an operation the increment operator plus plus adds one to its operand and the decrement operator minus minus We subtract one from it, one from it operand. Therefore, the following are the equivalent operations for the given increment and decrement operator. Plus plus i is equivalent to the i is equal to i plus one minus minus i is e equivalent to the i minus one. So these are the different types of operators, increment, decrement operators. So these operators are very useful in the loops. Control statements are there, no? In that one, so iterating statements are iterating statements are presented, no? In that iterating statement, now uh, it will be very useful. And the next one is the assignment operator. So in addition to usual assignment operator, we have a set of shorthand operators. That what happens is we have used that shorthand operator. It will that simplifies the coding of a certain type of assignment statement. It is one of the form. Variable operation equal to expression. We can short the assignment operation. See here, for example, a plus equal to b. A is a variable. Plus is the operator equal to b is a expression. Ex So it in that one it might be a any expression or operand or whatever it is. So where b is variable operator and the expression is a some expression a plus equal to b, which means a is equal to a plus b, a minus equal to b, a is equal to a minus b, a star equal to b. So that equal to a is equal to a star b. So likewise assignment operators are presented. Then the conditional operator or ternary operator also we can tell. So C provides a peculiar operator called the question mark colon, which is useful in reducing the code. So and it is a ternary operator requiring three operands. See here the general format of the conditional operator is expression one, question mark, expression two, colon. Expression three. So where expression one, expression two, and expression three are the expressions. Exp one, exp two, or exp three. In the above conditional expression, a exp is evaluated first. If it is true, then expression two is evaluated. If it is false, expression one returns a false value. Then Expression three gets evaluated. So in this manner, the conditional operator will work. So now these are the different types of tokens presented in the C. So now we will see the basic structure of the C programming. So for any language, if we are speaking some English language, if you tell that I won't use the grammar, uh, means I won't use past tense as was present tense as is if I, i will use my own grammar like this if everyone says what happens so there will not be a some common mechanism then no one will understand the others language so it will become difficult so that way we had some common characteristics like that yeah, we had to use this grammar in this grammar we had to follow this instructions like this we had In the same manner, while writing your C program, also we have to follow some structure. So everyone has to follow the same structure. 
structure so that we'll see now so what is the structure of a c program so in the c program it might consist of one or more functions so we can have more number of functions in one single program also so each function will perform some specific task so see here the below one shows the structure of a c program so initially we had two statements secure hash include spdio.h hash include ponyo.h these two are called as the pre processor directives which means before the execution of the code first it will get to execute the pre processor directives so hash include spdio.h that spdio.h represents the standard input output which means while you are giving input or output from the program clearly some statements already we had shown no we had already seen the uh, input output statements so printf scanf so now uh, that printf scanf uh, printf means it will print the output on the monitor so every time we can't write a specific code to that one so we had already built some code for that one and we had stored that one in the some header file called stdio.h standard input output header file so if we include that one we can get that code from there to here so no need to write every time the print of function so that code already has been presented in stdio.h header file So in the same manner, Sanyo dot H like this, we have so many preprocessor directives. Then coming to the second one, void main. So already we had know about void. Void is a no data type. Then main, open parenthesis and closed parenthesis. In any language, the execution of a program always will start with the main function only. So the next one. the start of the program will represented in c with the open curly brace and every statement in the c program has to be ended with the semicolon so here we have clear some statements will be presented what the depending upon our application what are the statements we need to include that will be included in this portion and closed curly brace will represent the end of your program so end of your c program so this is the structure pre processor directive main function and followed by open curly brace closed curly brace if we want to write one more function after this closed curly brace we can again write the name of the function then again open curly brace and the set of the statements and closed curly brace like this we can write so this is the structure of a c program so everyone we have to follow the same structure is there any doubt till now ma no ma'am some of the rules to write a c program all c statements must end with the semicolon as we know that every c statement has to be end with the semicolon c is a case sensitive that means the upper case and lower case characters are different and a c statement can be written in one line or it can be split into the multiple lines in single line itself we can write print f colon can a colon but it should not look very good so that we will go for the multiple lines braces must always match upon page so if we have one open brace then close curly brace one two open curly braces two close curly braces should be presented every c program will start with the main function 
so and comments can be nested single line comments or multiple line comments we can give okay ma thank you everyone